The character balance of Smash Ultimate has been pretty universally praised since the game's release, or at the very least has had a much more balanced DLC cycle than Smash 4 so far. We've seen a pretty large variety of characters competing at the highest level of the game, with some's use ebbing and flowing based on patches, like Pichu, who we singled out in a video a few weeks ago. So as we come up on the end of the fall PGR season, we thought we'd take a deep look at what the character diversity of the first PGR ranking looked like to see what we can learn from it, such as how the the meta has changed since that ranking was published. And if you're looking for tips to level up your main, check out ProGuides.com for on-demand coaching to get you prepared to compete at the next major. Our new Pro Pass grants you free passes to our Play With Pros platform, along with a plethora of exclusive content all posted daily. Make sure you don't miss our new Pro course with MKLeo himself, a new one with ESAM, as well as others coming soon. But with that out of the way, let's start by talking about the characters that appeared the most on the Spring PGR. Pause and make your guess for the top three before we spoil it for you. And this list includes all characters listed next to the top 50, the Area 51 members, and all of the honorable mentions. And time's up. If you guessed Wolf, Palutena, and Pichu, you'd be right. And if you followed the early Ultimate metagame, these three for sure make a lot of sense. It felt like anyone who was anyone in the Smash community had at least one of these three as a pocket pick in case they needed it for a bad matchup for their main. Five out of the top ten players on the ranking have at least one of these characters listed next to them. And if you're looking for the specific numbers throughout the top 50, Wolf appeared 12 times, Palu appeared 10 times, and Pichu was right behind at 9. The whole readout of the other characters that appeared more than 5 times also makes a lot of sense when you consider where these characters appear both on our tier list here at Pro Guides and many of the top players lists as well. Snake and Lucina appearing 8 times each, Peach and Mario making 7 appearances, Pokemon Trainer, Joker, and Inkling all showing up 6, and finally Mega Man alone at 5. The real odd ones in this group are really Mario and Mega Man. The abundance of Mario I chalk up to many players' use of him in the last game, which translated over pretty well into Ultimate. Mario isn't nearly as dominant in this game as he was in Smash 4, but he provided the players who chose to stick with him a slight edge, as they didn't have to completely start from scratch, unlike, say, Pichu or Joker means. And the same is exactly why we see Mega Man this high as well. Mars is the only player on the list that has the Blue Bomber listed as a secondary, and the other four, Scat, Yeti, Kamehameha, and Peebnut, were all Mega Man mains in Smash 4. So I think his placement this high says less about the quality of the character in Ultimate, and instead speaks to how much character experience was able to transfer over from Smash 4. Next, let's talk about some of the other interesting little tidbits we can glean from this analysis before we finish off this video by shaming the characters who didn't appear at all. Daisy was a character that initially had very minuscule differences between her and Peach that have since been patched out, making the two characters only cosmetically different. So then, it should come as no surprise that her two appearances on the list for Sam Sora and Captain Zack both come with her being listed alongside Peach. And I think with the shine of her inclusion wearing off by this point in the game's life cycle alongside those previously mentioned conformity patches, there's a possibility that this is the last PGR we might see Daisy show up on. Coming into this list, I'm sure you were expecting none of the Mii characters to make any showing as the PGR came way before the spotlight thrust upon Mii Gunner with the Sans costume. But oddly enough, Mii Gunner is the only of the three that didn't appear on the PGR. Sue held it down for Mii Swordfighter, and Massive Massachusetts Leet was the sole player representing Mii Brawler. Two frequency of appearance to tier list rating ratios that feel a little odd in retrospect are Game & Watch and Pikachu, who both only have two players representing them. Meister, who was still just an honorable mention at this point, and Tri-State's The Great Gonzalez for Game & Watch. Then for Pikachu, we have Esam and Canada's Captain L. With how many players have begun to express their distaste for Game & Watch, I think we can expect his numbers to rise significantly for the next ranking. But I don't think the same can really be said about Pikachu. Even with all of the nerfs Pikachu's pre-evolution has gotten, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Pichu appearing more than Pikachu yet again on the fall PGR. And it's hard to say exactly why we see so few Pikachu mains at the highest level with how generally accepted it is that he's... Well, busted. Let us know in the comments what your theory is. That lastly brings us to the Hall of Shame of who in Ultimate's enormous cast didn't make the cut. Again, I venture you to take some guesses on who you think didn't make it. And this is before Hero and Banjo made it on the scene, so those two don't count. We're also going to be including Echoes as their own characters in this list. There's 15 who didn't make it, so you've got odds of getting at least one. Alright, time's up. The PGR Hall of Shame is inhabited by DK, Puff, Zelda, Marth, 
Pit, Dark Pit, Robin, Ken, Ryu, Bowser Jr., Little Mac, Corin, Simon, Isabel, and Piranha Plant. Almost all of these make a lot of sense, as nearly all of the characters that aren't Echoes on this list are generally regarded as pretty garbage tier characters. Ken and Ryu are by far the best characters here, and didn't end up making the list through a combination of their insane level of complexity compared to other characters, paired with the buffs that increased their quality tremendously coming months after the game's release. So I think they'll be able to redeem themselves on the next ranking. The same can be said for Marth and Piranha Plant, thanks to MKLeo's recent use of Marth in tournament, earning him a spot on his card, and Japan's Brood likely earning an honorable mention or better spot for his plant play. But for the rest, they may be stuck in ultimate hell, unless they get a top player to pick them up for a niche matchup or some character-altering buffs. This isn't to say that these characters don't have a talented player piloting them. Jigglypuff has Melee Legend Hungry Box, Bowser Jr. has the Netherlands Young Eevee, and Zelda has Ven from Las Vegas. But that isn't enough to make these characters jump onto the rankings. And that about does it for this video. Which character from the Wall of Shame do you think has the best shot of making their first appearance on an Ultimate PGR in the fall? Was there any characters you were surprised to see aren't as popular as you initially expected? Also, make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and put those notifications on to make sure you don't miss out on any content on the competitive Ultimate scene in the future.